So I'm Zach Libetan, I'm VP product at CLDB. Before that, I work at Oracle and other companies. And in this session, I'm going to talk about uh, data modeling. Um, CLDB, the company, for those of you who are not familiar, CLDB is a company behind CLA, the, the database, the project, if you will. Uh, CLA is a high performance big data database. Uh, compatible with Apache Cassandra in the CQL level, and compatible with uh, Amazon DynamoDB, again, in the API level. And by compatible, I mean that uh, the, the compatibility in the protocol level, the binary protocol level. So any driver that work either with Cassandra or DynamoDB will work out of the box with Scylla as well. Uh, although we have our own drivers uh, that give you some extra boost for performance, but uh, that's not in the scope of this session. Scylla was developed with performance in mind. That's the P99 that I mentioned earlier. Um, it was uh, created in C++ with a thread per core and a lot of goodies, a lot of focus on performance. Again, out of scope for this session. Uh, you can use Scylla in three different variants, if you will although this word might be sound scary in these days, but uh, that's, that's a good variant. So the first is the open source. You can uh, find Scylla in GitHub, download the code, compile it if you have some time on your hand, or download the binary RPM, Deb, Docker. Uh, you can find Scylla community AMI on AWS, on GCP and such. We also have an enterprise version, which is based on open source, uh, like 90, I don't know, 95% is the same, but enterprise do have some extra features, uh, mostly around security, but also around a workload prioritization. And mostly enterprise is more stabilized. Uh, and uh, that's the version that we uh, provide support for, commercial support for. And last but not least is Scylla Cloud. Scylla Cloud is a managed, uh, ver managed version of, of uh, the enterprise of Scylla Enterprise, you can consume it on AWS, you can consume it on, on GCP now, and we are basically managing the cluster for you, doing upgrade, doing 24 by seven proactive monitoring, and everything that you would expect uh, from a database as a service these days. Uh, so check it out. That's probably the easiest way uh, to uh, take a Scylla for a speed. So if you want to just test Scylla very quickly, the two easiest way I, I would assume is running Scylla as a Docker or use Scylla uh, on the cloud. And you don't even have to provide a credit card at first. Um, we are hiring um, with a lot of position from developer advocate to developer in, in Golan, in C++ and many other things. So uh, check out our uh, page. Um, so today's session is about uh, NoSQL modeling. Uh, so first, the first few minutes will be about what is NoSQL, although I, I'm sure the term is, is familiar by everyone by now. Uh, but I will try to make it a uh, quick and focus on, on Scylla. And then we're going to deep dive, or at least dive into wide column, uh, data modeling, partition key, clustering key, what this term means, why you should be careful on choosing them. Uh, we're going to explain what is materials view and secondary index in the scope of NoSQL and Scylla. And then a quick summary, and I'm sure we'll have some time for a Q&A. So what is NoSQL? NoSQL has been around for probably more than 15 years. And when people talk about NoSQL, they talk about a lot of things. It's a very wide term, and there is, are probably hundreds of databases that fit into the NoSQL title. There are a few ways to try to look at NoSQL from, I guess, two dimensions. I don't know if you can see my hands, but from two dimensions. So the first dimension is availability. And you can try to partition all the databases based on the CAP theory, for example. Is it more consistent or is it more available? These days, CAP theory considered to be old and not granular enough. And there are more advanced category of that, but on a very high level, uh, Scylla, Cassandra, DynamoDB all fall into the same category of eventual consistent. Uh, so although there are slightly difference between these databases, eventual consistence describe to some extent all of them. And in all of them, you can actually 
uh, do more granular decision of what consistency level you want. But that's not the focus of this session, so let's uh, leave it with that. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in, in uh, this uh, thing, you can check out the architecture pages on, on Docs and also uh, the Jepson reports in general, and in particular the, Jep the Jepson report on Scylla, which go into uh, this uh, topic of availability versus consistency at depth. Another way that's the other uh, access uh, to categorize uh, NoSQL databases is by data modeling, which is the focus of this session. Um, so I, I know for people who are familiar with this database, this seems to be crude, but uh, uh, so you can think of, of, uh, of NoSQL database from the simple to the complex data modeling. So the simplest will be key value uh, where you have a key and a value, as the name suggests, the value doesn't have to be an integer or one type. It can be a complex data structure, depending on database. And roughly you can put Aerospike in this category, Redis, which is a, a more of a, like an in-memory cache to this category. And I'm sure many are familiar with that. A similar data modeling is a document store. A document store, you can think about it as a key and a document as a value. And the document usually can be like a nested uh, JSON or XML or whatever structure that you can uh, look into. The third uh, type, which will be the focus of this session is white column. At a very high level, white column is a key, key value. The first key partition key, second key is cluster key, and then the value. And we'll explain more about uh, this uh, data modeling uh, this session. And there are more type of NoSQL database really even more than, than in this slide, there is graph database, geoceptal database, time series database, and, and more and more. It's, it's really an interesting and a very dynamic domain. Uh, I won't go into this diagram, but it's cool. So I left the link in the, in the slide. So if you get the, sli the slide later, you can check it out. It's a, a guy named Satish created like a graph of uh, most known uh, database on all the cloud and off the cloud. Uh, and it's uh, mentioned both Scylla, Redis, and other databases that I mentioned in this session. So uh, check it out. Uh, so let, let's start. Uh, when we talk about data modeling, the first thing to, to understand uh, is that uh, Scylla and most of the NoSQL databases are distributed database. And distributed mean that it's, it's not all on one machine. It's distributed between many machines called nodes or server. I, I will call it node in this scope. Uh, so Scylla can support cluster from a, from a three node cluster to many, many hundreds of, of clusters, uh, sorry, hundreds of nodes in a cluster separate to data center and reps and such. And the fact that uh, the database or the data is distributed, already uh, set the first and most important data modeling aspect of it, which is a partition. You cannot put all, all of your data on the same node or even three nodes because it just, uh, if we're talking about many, many terabytes of data, it will not just, it will not fit there. So you're doing some kind of partitioning. In the old days, or, or still today, actually, if you're using databases like MySQL, you, uh, you have to uh, do the partitioning yourself uh, with more uh, distributed by nature database like Scylla. You don't have to do that. The database will partition that for you and it will do it uh, using some kind of hash function that we'll mention uh, later. Uh, in practice, uh, Scylla and other NoSQL databases are not just partition data between the node, it also, they also replica the data between the node. Uh, the often people use replication factor of three, meaning that every information element will replicate, for example, on node one to three, or another inform element, information element on node uh, two, two, three, four, etc. And if you have hundreds of nodes, uh, you can imagine it will be evenly distributed. What I want to mention is that even though the data is replica, still not every node holds all the data. Still, the, the only three nodes or four nodes, depending on your application factor, hold the information. So the database needs to manage which information element fit in each node. And th that is the partitioning, and that's the partition key, which is the first data modeling aspect that we're going to touch. Scylla, as I mentioned, can also support multiple data center uh, configuration. 
a data center usually mean a region, AWS region or, or GCP region or your own on-prem region. And the data is replicated uh, completely offline in an asynchronic way. So it's very efficient. For example, you can have, uh, usually you have application distributed as well. So the application, for example, in, in Virginia can query the data center on Virginia and the uh, application running in Frankfurt can query the, the data center origin in Frankfurt and update are going in both ways asynchronically. So all, class, all the clusters, the two data center are eventually synchronized. Usually it's take a few milliseconds to, to cross the ocean and maybe hundred milliseconds. And uh, you can work in such a distributed way. Uh, this kind of architecture actually was recently tested by FHIR. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the OVH cloud, you know that one of their data center uh, caught fire for some reason, I think a year ago or so, and we actually had a customer that was using this data center as one, luckily one of his data center in the Scylla deployment. And uh, actually Scylla, as you can see here, that's a capture from the monitoring. So Scylla continued to function as expected with a third, we have 30 nodes, 10 of them in this data center, 10 of the nodes went down, but the other nodes continue running as expected. So that was a really a, a trial by fire, if you will, of this architecture. Uh, so when we're talking about data modeling, uh, and, and this is like a generalization, uh, but, but uh, bear with me. So usually when we talk, people on this call coming from an SQL background, what we usually do, the process is take your uh, data, try to understand it, break it into elements or entities like uh, people, offices, managers, and such, understand the relation between this entity and create a table per entity with relations. In, uh, and the relation could be a form key or another table and such. And that's basically what you do. And you assume that if you have a good data modeling, your application can uh, just use it. And it, it doesn't really matter what application you are using. You are modeling the data, not necessarily the application. Or NoSQL, NoSQL in general have a more limited data modeling and that's true for all of the, no, or most of the NoSQL database. They don't have the full power of SQL and, and they give up some of it uh, in favor of high availability performance and other terms. So usually in NoSQL, you, what you would do, you will write down exactly what query your application need to, to use and create your entire schema based on that and not the other way around. And that's what we're gonna demonstrate in this uh, session. Uh, one thing I want to mention that keep in mind it's an iterative process. So yes, you do write your, you do write your query in your schema and you assume it's gonna do fine. Hopefully you test it as well and even performance test before production. But after a month, a year of production, a data pattern change, volume change, application change, so your at some point your assumption will break and you have to change the schema. So it's, it's, and that's roughly true for SQL as well, but even more for no SQL because you have to take more assumption. So keep in mind, it's an iterative process. It's a never ending process of creating a schema, populating the data, continue monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. And at some point you probably have to change your uh, schema. Uh, so some of the differences between SQL and OSQL, and again, that, that there are many, many variants to it. Each, each NoSQL database has a slightly different approach. Uh, so uh, just an introduction. So NoSQL database, or actually here when you see CQL, for those of you who are not familiar with the CQL is the Cassandra query language, this is what Scylla use uh, in most cases. Uh, so you can think about it as a NoSQL in this uh, scope. And uh, so the data is uh, denormalized. You don't have joins. You don't have nested where uh, you have limited order uh, and such. But we do have way to bypass all of this limitation to some extent. And we're going to talk about it uh, shortly. So the data modeling. Uh, some, some terminology for data modeling in Scylla. So the cluster we mentioned, the cluster is actual nodes. Then you have a key space. A key, key space is like 
a database in SQL, it's like a, a, a collection of table, you can think about it a collection of table, Keyspace do have some properties uh, that we're not gonna cover in this session, but some of these properties are a replication factor, user defined types, user defined function in some cases, another term. The second uh, term, which should be familiar for people coming from SQL as well, is a table. A table, you can think about it, again, I'm, I'm demonstrating it in my hand. It, you can think about it as a matrix of uh, columns and rows, uh, and each cell holds some information, or it's record like. So each cell can be one uh, field, can be a collection uh, and such. So, so far it's pretty similar to SQL. The difference here is the partition uh, and that's what I mentioned earlier. You have to somehow partition the, the row and the table to servers or to nodes. And the partition is a collection of, of rows, if you will, uh, all placed on the same place, on the same physical uh, node. So the first thing that you need to do when you define the table in Scylla or Cassandra or, or DynamoDB is defining what is your partition key. And that's the main concept here. So, so here is a table. This table can be, uh, I will explain this table later, but that's the matrix that I mentioned earlier. You have in this example, you have the patch chip ID, the time, the owner and the, and the heart rate is the, the column. And these are the rows. Uh, Note here that some of the roads fit into the same partition. So that's what I mentioned earlier. I'm, I'm going to, I don't, don't need to read the fine details here. I'm going to continue with this example in the next few slides. Uh, so partition key, as I mentioned, partition key is, is the, the most important function of the data modeling. A partition key, you define a collection of your column in uh, your table as the partition key. In this case, in this example, and the partition key is just the patch chip ID, but it can also be more than one column. There is a hash function in Scylla called partitioner that take this key, hash it to, to a number, and using this number, find which node should hold this data. And usually it's more than one node, usually three nodes, but, but the principle is the same. Each node uh, in Scylla and Cassandra and similar database, each node hold uh, what is called a range of, of uh, tokens. The entire cluster is split into token ring. And, and basically this function lets the database know which node and it's still which even which core all this information. Um, so that's another diagram of the same principle. So database or key space, a whole table, if the table split into partition, where each partition is uh, located on a specific subset of nodes. Each partition composed of rows and each rows have cell and the cell hold the actual information in the database. So, so far so good, I hope. And let's see an actual example. Uh, so throughout this, uh, this session and demos, I'm gonna use an example of a imaginary startup that uh, collect information from colors of pets and the first table we're gonna see, it, it's a very uh, simple, starting with the most simple example. There is a pet chip ID, owner ID, the name of the pet and nothing more than that. So no additional data, sorry. And in this case, we're using uh, the pet chip ID as a partition key. This is the syntax that we're using on CQL. So that's an actual schema uh, from CQL. As you can see, it's pretty similar to SQL, but not exactly the same. And the fact that it's similar actually confuse some people. So keep in mind, it's not a SQL, it's CQL. And this is how this table will look like, uh, logically at least. Uh, there is a partition key, and the reason this example, one, it's the most simple example, one row in each partition. So you can think about it as a key value use case because we don't have a clustering key. We only have a partition key and a set of values. And later we're gonna see a more complex example. So that's, that's a basic uh, thing. And now come the question, what will be, and that's a key question, maybe the most important question in this, in this presentation, what will be a good partition key? Uh, because uh, if you choose the wrong partition key, you are uh, putting yourself in, in a bad situation from the start. 
So a good partition key have two uh, properties, high cardinality and roughly even distribution. High cardinality is very simple. High cardinality is meaning how many partition do you expect to have in the database? So Scylla can easily support billions, and I really mean billions of partitioning in a database. Uh, so we want to choose a partition key that distribute this, part this partition across the nodes. So we want to choose the one with high cardinality and we'll give examples soon. The second is even distribution. You don't want the majority or a big chunk of your partition to be in one node. Why? Because you, you are wasting resources. This node will be overloaded and the rest of the node will not do much. By the way, Scylla, in Scylla it's even more important than other databases because Scylla, it's not, it's not a performance session, but in Scylla we did a lot of work of uh, actually splitting the data and the computation inside each node to internal uh, cores, where each core at CPU basically is handling a subset of the data. So if you have all the data falling to the same node and even to the same core, uh, you are basically misusing your system. Uh, what, what will be a bad partition? A bad partition will be a partition with a low cardinality that can lead to hard partition, large partition. And I will explain what each in a second. Uh, so a few examples for bad and uh, good uh, partition keys. So classic example for a good partition key will be a, a, some kind of UUID or username or a customer name or a customer ID or something like that. A bad partition key will be anything that group uh, the, the information to a limited number of, of, uh, of groups. So it can be a state, it could be age or something like that. That would be bad partition. Why is it a bad partition key? So imagine that you have a partition key by state in the United States. So you only have 50 states, which can be already lower than the number of nodes that you have on your cluster. So already it doesn't make a lot of sense. And not just that, you can have many of you, for example, California is, is relatively large state with a lot of people. So a lot and a lot of the input and output will be on the same node because you have a partition for California. It doesn't make sense. By the way, customer in some cases doesn't make sense either. It's depending on your data. You know your data better. So we had we had a customer of C or users of Scylla. We chose something like a customer with a partition key initially, but after a while, it's turned out that they don't have a huge number of, of customers. And not only that, they are very unevenly distributed. So 90% of their incoming traffic came from one customer. So using the customer in their case, the partition key didn't work well and they have to change that. Uh, so what I already mentioned, what is the risk of, uh, of uh, choosing a, a bad partition key? Well, not just bad, it, it, can, it, it can start good and turn bad later. You don't really know. And a hard partition is a case when a lot of the traffic hitting the same node in the same partition or the same core and this is actually an example not from Scylla, it's an example from DynamoDB. All the NoSQL database have this issue of, of a hard partition because every time you will partition your data, the, the, the partition key might fail. Uh, so it's a common problem. And this is an example that I took from a, an interesting blog post, check it out, the million dollar engineering problem. And I don't know if you can see it, there is a thin red line here that represent the hard partition. By the way, there is a movie, the, the thing with line, not related to the session, but recommended anyway, uh, Trans Malik uh, directed, but a little bit off topic. Uh, so why is a hard partition is a bad? It's a bad thing. As I mentioned, imagine that you, you have billions and billions of data. You want to support tens of million requests per second, which is very uh, feasible in Scylla and, and you invested and created a pretty large cluster of 30 nodes. But most of the traffic actually go to one node. So what will happen in practice, these three sillas or three nodes will be red hot and overloaded. So at, at some point they cannot even support the traffic that the, the user is sending. While all the other nodes are doing basically nothing or almost idle or handling just the, the, I don't know, 50 percent of the traffic. So you are getting, uh, uh, you, you ask it, if you will, on two fronts. One, you invested a lot of money, but most of the nodes are idle. And second, the nodes that are loaded cannot handle the traffic. 
uh, so you start getting all kinds of time. So that, that's a, a, the situation in a hot partition use case, and you want to avoid that. First, by selecting a good partition key. Second, by monitoring the system and validating you are not hitting the, this case. And there are tools in Scylla that allow you to do that. Okay, so I, I, I'm done uh, with the, the, the key value use case and explain what is a good partition key. Uh, second, I'm going to talk about white partition because as I mentioned, Scylla is not just a key value, it's a key key value data modeling. So uh, always starting with the query. So let's imagine uh, I'm going back to the same example, but in, in this example, I have an application that uh, actually collect information from the pets and report it back to a database. Imagine a, an application that every second record the heartbeat, the, I don't know, the number of steps or what's not of the pet and send it back to your database and you want to do query like the one mentioned here. So for example, select the last heartbeat uh, for a specific pet or specific dog, or even more than that, that's a slightly more complex, select all the heartbeat of a specific dog, but uh, just a second of a specific dog uh, between in a time range, so between this time and this time, and, uh, and this is slightly more complex. We couldn't do it with that with the previous table, so supporting this kind of query uh, required this kind of schema. So in this case, we have uh, again the pet chip ID, the owner ID, timestamp, and a heart rate. And in this case, the partition key is again the pet chip ID. By the way, who think the pet chip ID is a good partition key based on what we've seen before? Is it a good partition key? Raise your hand if you think it's a good partition key. Okay, I cannot really see you, but it, so let, let me tell you the answer. It is a good partition key because it, we're using a UUID here, so likely it will be this nicely distributed across the nodes. The clustering key in this case, that's a new thing, it's a time. So on each partition of, of, of a specific pet, we have a lot of rows. Each row represents timestamp and a value, timestamp and a value, timestamp and a value. So uh, the clustering key in, in DynamoDB, they call the clustering key ordering key because it, it, it's allowing you to, or it's basically ordering the row in a partition. And the same goes for Scylla. In Scylla, we call it clustering key, but it has the same function. Okay, and with that, I want to just uh, let me try a, a, a quick demo here. So I'm switching between screens. I hope uh, you can see what I'm demonstrating. And by the way, I'm copy pasting from a Git's example that uh, there is a link. I will share the link after. Uh, so let me uh, quickly copy paste. I hope, I hope you can see at least some of it. A session without a live demo is pretty boring. And if, if the demo fail, it's even more boring. So let me insert a few heart rates here and then do a select. Okay, so you can't really see the details, but, but I insert, I use insert to insert a bunch of, of a, a dummy heart rates. No dog was actually used in this demo, so don't worry. And I can also, run a query like the one that I presented earlier, which is select, whoop, select with the time range. Let me, okay, I hope you can see at least part of it, but I did a select uh, with a workload of pet chip ID equals a specific UID and the time range between value and the value. This work very, very efficiently. Why it's work very efficiently? The partition key already limits the database to a specific node or three node in the case of replicas. So it's already fast. And the time range is done on a specific partition, but the partition is already ordered by time because time is the ordering key or the clustering key. So it's very efficient to do a query like that. And that's going to practically be less than a millisecond. We can actually go back to the monitoring um, and th this is the Scylla monitoring dashboard available in Scylla Cloud, but also in Scylla Open Source and Enterprise. It's, it's an open independent open source project. 
I don't have a lot of value here, so some of the value are not presented. This, that's a overview dashboard. Uh, okay, let me quickly jump to another dashboard here. We have like a few of those. There is a SQL dashboard. It can be useful to, to check out three, the right. Um, okay. I don't have a lot of data here, so uh, the latency will be very, very low, but it's not uh, as representative. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the presentation and maybe we'll demo something else uh, later in this session. Uh, so what will be a good clustering key? So we already agree what is a good partition. What is a good clustering key? Again, the clustering key, the term, the order of the row in the partition, so we want to order it in a way that is useful for your query. I already mentioned first you could define what is the core of the application. And second, you want to model it. So in my example, just as a reminder, I started with, I want to do this kind of query. So in a partition key, I want to either get the last value or the value between a, a, in a specific time frame. So using time, or timestamp as the cluster and key make a lot of sense. It, it, it's not true for all cases. And in many cases, we actually don't need a cluster and key. So in my first example of just keeping a data store of the pets and the pets name, I don't necessarily need a cluster and key. And if I don't, you don't need to use it. You actually, it's better not to use it. If, don't, don't force it. But if you do want to uh, order, order on a partition key, use the cluster and key. And this is how it would look like. So for a specific partition key, we have a lot of rows. Each row holds a heart rate and a value, heart rate and a value. And I'm sure that some of you already think, hey, how many, how many rows can you, can you fit with, into one partition? Yeah, so that's a good question. And uh, okay, let's say in this slide, that's a good question. And, uh, if you're putting a lot on a lot of row on the same partition, at some point you will get to a large partition uh, situation uh, because you might have millions and millions of row in the same partition. Is it a problem? So two years ago, I would say yes, uh, but or three years ago, but since then we did a lot of uh, refactoring Scylla that uh, basically solved this problem. Uh, so you can have easily have millions and millions of rows in the same partition and won't have a problem. Uh, recently we've seen on production a, a partition of 200 gigabytes, which is, used to be considered huge, but it's supported. You do want to be careful about a large partition becoming hot partition. So if all of your traffic is going to the same partition, you might have a problem. So the general recommendation is not to have huge, huge partitions. Uh, millions of row will be supported. If you can even go below that, usually it's better, but it's depend on the use case. It is supported. And um, so we, we send the partition key, we send the clustering key. When you set a clustering key, it will also, also set an order of the clustering key, ascending or descending. Uh, what to choose? Cho choose based on what you query for. So if in our example, uh, I want to query, the latest value every time. So ascending makes sense because I can just put limit one and have it very fast. If it's the other way around, choose descending. You can always query on the reverse order of the classroom key, but then performance will be not as good. So it is possible, but you will get some performance hit. Uh, in a case that you think you, you got a two wide partition, as I mentioned earlier, there is a way to handle that. And the way is to create a component partition key. What is a component partition key? We are basically adding elements to the partition key, in this case, the date. So if we used to have like a huge partition key holding all the information of, of all the time information of specific pet, now each partition will hold only one date. So there is pros and cons to this approach. The pros that yeah, now you have a limited number of uh, of row per partition, basically the number of seconds on a day in this example. And the, the, the cons of this approach that if you want to query all the information from all the days, you have to query more than one partition. And so it's a little bit more work from the application side, 
in a return of that that you don't put a lot and a lot of that on the same partition. And, and of course, it's can, it can, we can use other fields is that just an example. The idea here is it breaking the partition to the smaller partitions. Okay, so I hope I, I gave you some insight into a partition key and, and, uh, and clustering keys. This, the last item I want to touch on this session is materials view. And uh, probably not going to get to the secondary index. Uh, so what, what is a materials view? Uh, the, the view is a concept actually exists in many databases. I want to give you the seal or the, no, the NoSQL uh, uh, variant of it. So we are, let's say, going back to the example we, we had before. So the example we had before, quick reminder, the partition key was uh, the patch chip ID, clustering key was time, and we had the owner ID. Till now, we just ignore it. But now I want to actually query by the owner ID. I want to, for example, have the, all the measurement of a specific owner. So this is actually not, uh, it's not a partition key, it's not a clustering key. So we already know it's not gonna be efficient. But in some cases, my application, uh, the dev application developers say, hey, fine, you created your schema, now I want to use another column as, as a key. So what will you do? So if you naively try to select uh, using the owner is equal, you get an error back saying, hey, this is not supported and you need to use allow filter name. Why is that? Say that right to warn you. If you, uh, if you want to, and you actually force Scylla to run this score with allow filtering, behind the scenes, Scylla will have to scan all the nodes for all the data and find the specific owner and, and send you back the result. It will work, but the performance will not be as good. And if you have billions and billions of rows, it's actually gonna be bad performance. Maybe, maybe you don't care, maybe it's the right option. I will, I will explain later why it makes sense in some cases. But if you want to have a very quick sub millisecond uh, response for this query, you won't get it with allow filtering. And this is where we introduce a material view. A material view, you can think about it as denormalization. Uh, people that work with NoSQL are used to with denormalization. It's, denormalization is basically take the same information and put it twice insert it twice in the database, every time with a different key. Uh, so that, that you can still do that with CLI, sometimes it's useful. The problem with that, that you have to manage the synchronization between these two table yourself, and, and it can be a, a extra work that you don't want to do. So you create a materials view. Materials view is denormalization, automatic denormalization. So CLI will create another table for you with the same data with a different key and synchronize between the two tables automatically. So if you delete one here, you delete here, update, update and such. And this is, I don't, I don't want to spend time on the syntax itself, but you, once you create the view, you can use it to select by the owner because the owner is the partition key in the view. It's not a partition key in the base table. So that's an efficient way to query by a column which is not the partition key. And this is how it would look like. Uh, it, it, you can think about it as a transformation of the original data to, to a new table. Now keep in mind that this table will not, not necessarily be put, uh, located on the same nodes because it's have its own partition key. Partition key leads you to the node. So the view and the base table, could, base table can be on separate nodes. Of course, still I take care of that. You don't need to worry about it, but keep it in mind. It also similar to denormalization, you, you pay for it by, by storage. So you are keeping the same information twice on disk. So it have its cost. Uh, this is how an update to a view will look like. Uh, Scylla will first uh, store the base table of the information and then update another node with the view information. And now this is actually a simplified diagram because in practice, uh, there are usually three replicas, both for the base table and for the view. So there are more errors and more messages and more storage. And that's the price that you are paying for keeping the same information twice. The read from a view is actually pretty efficient because the view already holds the data and the coordinator can go directly to the view and fetch the information from there. 
by the way, the, in, in practice, usually the coordinator is already one of the replicas. Uh, if you're using latest driver from Scylla or, or even from Cassandra, the driver try to optimize this query by going directly to the replica. It's an optimization. So in most case, it will hit. And if it's missed, it will act like it's shown here with the coordinates to send the message to another replica. But in most cases, there is actually only one message coming to the database. How to choose a good material view index? Exactly the same, the same reasoning to choose a good partition key. If you try to group a lot and a lot of, of rows into the same, the same key, you will likely have a problem. So the owner seems to be a good, a good candidate for, a, for a materials view index because there are a lot of owners. But if you try using something like age or state, as a key for the materials view, you will likely hit a problem as we mentioned before. So it's the same story back again. A global secondary index, you, you can think about it as a syntactic sugar in Scylla on top of materials view. It's have slightly, I, I'm not gonna spend too much time on, on it. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, two things, first, uh, and let's go for, for other databases as well, for people using DynamoDB, so this should be uh, familiar to you. If by chance, or not by chance, sorry, by design, you are using a secondary index or a material view with the same partition key as the base table, Scylla will optimize the implementation based on the fact that uh, the view and the base table are, is using the same partition and the data is on the same node. So earlier I mentioned that the view and the, and the base table are likely not on the same node. If the partition key is the same, they will be on the same node. So still I use that for optimization. Uh, people coming for Apache Cassandra, Apache Cassandra also have secondary index. It have the same syntax as still a secondary index, but the implementation is different. So keep that in mind that if you're moving from Cassandra to Scylla and use secondary index, you might see different performance characteristic. So we actually seen three different way for query uh, uh, a Scylla table not based on, on the partition key. So the best way and then the, the highway or the main road, if you will, use a partition key and you almost guarantee to have sub millisecond result. But if you want to query on a column, which is not the partition key, you have three options. One is using filtering, which is basically a full scan of the data. Second material view and secondary index, which have slight difference that I'm not gonna cover here. So think about it as, as the same, roughly the same option with this scope. So what you should use if, so the, the, like the rule of thumb, if, if this score is very, very rare, it's something that you are running ad hoc, maybe once a day, and you don't care as much about the latency of this query, just don't add an index, just run with allow filtering. Yes, it will load the data, it will do a full scan, but maybe you don't care as much. If you do care about latency and want this query to be a sub-second, then do create a materials view. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to cover the differences between material and secondary index. Under the hood, it's pretty much the same. Um, and by the way, you have a fourth option of just denormalization of data yourself. So you can always insert the data again from your application, but then you have to manage uh, the synchronization yourself. In some cases, it does make sense. Um, so last but not least, uh, what about joins? So let's say, so far I saw pretty simple queries and, and uh, it, it is the sweet spot of Scylla to query by uh, the partition key not doing join at all, but in some cases you do need to do something like that. And so what can you do? So Scylla by itself does not support join, but you can use third party tool like Presto or Spark that work very nicely with Scylla. Uh, of course, this tool can do a lot of things, transformation and, 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 uh, and complex query. Just keep in mind that likely this query will be translated to full scan in the database. So keep in mind it's going to be very efficient in most cases to use this tool, 
but again, if you don't, in many cases, you have like a, a specific query that you need a sub millisecond uh, response time, another query which you don't really care, like analytics that can run at night for hours, and then this tool become very handy. So we are almost done. Uh, so what are the key takeaway from, from this session? The first one, choose a good partition key. And, and if you remember just one thing is it, this one, it's the most important. Uh, second, if you need to choose a good clustering key, if you don't need a clustering key, avoid it. Uh, third is in case you want to query by a column which is not uh, the partition key and I want it to be very efficient, use materials view. And the next one is monitor, monitoring. So, so monitor, monitor, monitor. Don't, on, on a general, don't, don't start a benchmark and don't test a new database without a very good monitoring tool. In Scylla, we have this open, open source monitoring stack. Other tool have other monitoring uh, tools, use them. Otherwise, you, you're basically blind. And I can tell you that if people are in the open source or enterprise project, are calling support, asking them for help, the, the first question will be, uh, please show your monitoring data. And last, go, go to one, it's an iterative process. Uh, the schema that you created on day one will probably gonna change on day 100, simply because you don't know all the information in advance and sometimes data change. So uh, if you want to take Scylla for a spin, I already mentioned, uh, Scylla Cloud, you can also download uh, Scylla and run it and Docker and such. Everything that I say on this session and much, much more is covered in Scylla University, uh, which have a lot of uh, interactive, cool uh, session there. Uh, go for the data modeling, basic and advanced data modeling session to, uh, for a similar information to what I presented here, but in much, much more details and exercise, a uh, really cool site. So uh, check it out. And uh, by that, uh, I will switch to the Q&A. Uh, so what is the, I'm reading in a random order. So there's a question, what is, what is tail latency? Tail latency or sometimes P99 is actually a tail latency. You, in many cases, you, you're not interested, interested in the average latency of all the query. You're interested in the worst, 1% uh, of the queries, because this 1% this may affect the entire application. So this, this is what they call the latency, the higher percentage of the latency, 90, 95 or 99. If we're talking about P99, it's the worst 1% of the latency. And, and this is usually what you need to check. Uh, this is, by the way, what Scylla Excel at. Uh, so uh, the monitoring, uh, the monitoring stack that I showed earlier do have a dashboard for, uh, for the P99 latency. Uh, okay, looking for, for other question. Uh, is there a way to do a POC on a single node? Uh, so yes and no is a quick answer. So depending what you want to test. If you want to test a functional query like just to test if your query is legal or not working or not. Yes, use one Docker instance on your machine, it will work. If you want to test performance, it's not realistic. It's not realistic because a production database will always be at least three nodes. Um, so uh, test, testing it uh, on, on one node doesn't make sense. You, you are losing all the communication between the nodes. So I would recommend go to AWS, go to Scylla Cloud or set up on your own, but don't, don't test it on, on your laptop. Unless you're looking for functional testing, then it's fine. Um, okay. Other question uh, regarding the Dynamo uh, DB API. So yes, in this session, I mostly I gave example from the CQL, but I mentioned at the start that uh, Scylla is compatible both with Apache Cassandra and DynamoDB. DynamoDB have its own a different API, but, but roughly most of what I mentioned apply for both for DynamoDB and Scylla with DynamoDB API as well. You need to choose a good partition key 
uh, and uh, you can use multiple tables, uh, but the partition key is, is the most important selection and, and DynamoDB API also have this notion of both partition key and ordering key or cluster key, if you will. Um, last two question, can we use CineDB to capture uh, telemetry data of million of data? Yes, that's the exact same example that I gave before. Uh, should you put all of the data on the, of uh, one sensor on the same partition key? Uh, again, yes or no. Uh, so depending how many data points you have per partition key and depending what query you want to run. On some cases, it does make sense to put everything on the same partition key like I did in my first example of, of the pets. If, if you plan to have millions and millions of information element and the same partition, you might want to break the partition using a day to using something else. Um, okay, last question. How big can a collection be on, on the Scylla row? Okay, so this is something I, I didn't talk about at all. I didn't actually talk about data types in Scylla. So we talked about columns, but each column have a data type. So there are basic data types like integer, text, UID, time, step, etc. There is also more complex data type like collection set and map and such. Um, so uh, the, by the way, there is also user-defined types, but regarding collection, a, a collection is designed to be something like up to 100, 1,000 elements. If you have millions of, of value in a collection, you are doing something wrong. You have, it's highly recommended that you uh, break this collection to a new table because Scylla was not designed to support millions of, of value in the same collection on the same row. It's very much designed to support billions and billions of partition key and millions of, of row in, inside one partition, but not millions of element in a collection in a cell inside a row. So try to avoid that. And there are, there are more questions, but unfortunately we're out of time. So you have my email here, stay in touch, pin me. You can join our Slack channel. Uh, you can uh, join our uh, user mailing group and we'll be more than happy to answer more questions. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good day. Thanks.